Welcome back to Niche Marketing Monopoly. I am Paul Rhines, your host for the program. This is about million dollar business positioning and we are at module five. And module five is about shifting focus. And we're gonna be shifting focus from your perspective and the perspective of your clients, buyers, your avatar. And we're going to be looking at this with some somewhat advanced psychological models to get an understanding of how people function when they're exposed to specific aspects of a message and how that's gonna benefit you. We just left module four, we're moving into module five. In module four, we looked at feelings and we're gonna be readdressing that as we uh, continue through the program. Keep in mind, all we've done so far, everything we've done to this point is to take small pieces that are components of the copywriting process and gain a greater understanding of them. And even with all that you've learned so far, we're still talking about the principles and structure of copywriting. We haven't actually moved into the copy creation process, which we certainly will be doing, but it's important that you understand the structure, psychology, and uh, the creation of all of this in three separate components. And so that's why I've approached it in this way. So moving into module five, we're going to be talking about shifting focus. And specifically what we're going to be looking at here is a clinical process called behavioral response loops. And we're going to learn to understand what behavioral response loops are. And we're going to understand state redirection patterns and state redirection patterns and behavioral response loops uh, go together hand in hand. And those are really just some big clinical sounding words that are descriptions of particular behavior to create a recipe for handling the apathy and skepticism that we're talking about. Now, the apathy and skepticism that people experience is something that's been created over the course of time. And it's something that they just come pre-programmed with, but it's easy enough to deal with. And the way that we deal with it is by shifting their attention. It's called a redirection pattern. And this is something that happens really quickly. It would be just the first few seconds of a uh, video sales letter or the first few slides of a sales presentation if you were doing a screen capture. It's uh, something that happens pretty directly, pretty quickly. Now, the purpose behind this attention shift and using this redirection effort is to eliminate what we call blind sight skepticism. This is added to the apathy and uh, skepticism that they have from the consumer standpoint to the fact that they've never been to your site. So you have the additional factor of what we call blind sight skepticism to factor into it if they're not familiar with you or haven't been to your site before. So before we proceed, answer this question for me. What did you have for dinner last night? Talking about recipes, what did you eat for dinner last night? Now, is that something that's easy for you to recall? Some of you still don't have it. Go ahead and take your time and remember, what was it that you had for dinner last night? Now, that creates a momentary attention gap. When I ask you what you had for dinner last night, it's actually tough for you to recall that because it's not something that you put a lot of attention into. It's not something that you were expecting. And all of a sudden you're put into a position where you have what's called an attention gap and you have to make a decision about what to do. In other words, what gets your attention now? And that momentary attention gap is the space that exists between apathy and skepticism and open-mindedness. And so it's really as simple as what I just illustrated with your dinner. Now, the funny thing is, is I know from experience that some of the people that are viewing this still don't remember what they had for dinner last night. But the more important thing is, is it's unlikely highly unlikely, I should say, that you remember what I was talking about right before I asked you what you had for dinner last night. Now, take a moment and see if you can recall that and maybe enter the uh, answer in the box below here and give yourself a sense of trying to remember what it was that I was talking about before I asked you what it was that you had for dinner last night and see if you can get back to it, how long it takes, if at all, if you're able to. And I'll come back and uh, I'll clue you in on what that was before we get done here. So what to do, what not to do. We want to create a momentary attention gap. And that attention gap, again, puts you in a position where you have to decide what to do with your attention. So where do I direct my attention to? So let me ask you something. Have you ever had the experience of being in a public place, maybe a restaurant or a church, and somebody there drops a tray of food or breaks a glass, and everybody stops what they're doing and looks at the source of the unexpected noise? 
Sometimes that's accompanied by a loud, oh, from the people who were disrupted. Can you recall such an occasion where you've been in a public place and had such an experience? Well, this is the same thing. It's the same thing with a different name. In my research work, we call these collapsed behavioral loops. In NLP, or Near Linguistic Programming, it's called a pattern interrupt. In cybernetics, it's called perturbution. perturbation. Perturbation. That's a tough one there for me with the two R's. Perturbation. Uh, and in stimulus shifting is another word for it. Default domain shifts, uh, suboptimal responses. So for the purpose of this program, we're just going to call them redirection patterns. And again, they're just something that you hit somebody with for the first few seconds or the first few slides of a piece of work. Same thing, different name. Again, the purpose to, is to eliminate that blind sight skepticism that people have and that built-in apathy that makes them put everything under a magnifying glass, scrutinize as closely as they can, and ask as many questions as they can, and then scrutinize with a magnifying glass your answers to the questions. Um, there's a perfect example of this pattern interrupting uh, that uh, took place in the movie The Incredibles. The whole family's fighting and uh, they're going at it with each other and then all of a sudden somebody knocks at the door and the entire family stops fighting and then when the interruption is over they forget what they were arguing about. This is really just a perfect illustration of what I've been talking about here with your dinner, with the cafeteria. There's just countless examples of where this takes place all over your world and people uh, are accustomed to directing their attention to what they expect so when you throw something unexpected at them uh, it allows them to drop their defenses so to speak and become more open-minded so redirection patterns how do you do it well there's multiple ways you can go about it and we'll cover these in greater detail later but for right now understand that the different ways you can do it are you can have a visual interruption in other words they see something that they weren't expecting to see like a fish jumping out of a tank um, there's verbal interrupts where you say something that they weren't expecting and then there's action interrupts where you have them do something that they weren't expecting now, questions are great for creating interruptions and interrupts. And I'll give you an example that illustrates a really interesting way of approaching this that allows you to build on the pattern interrupt as part of your sales message uh, to be able to differentiate yourself from your competitors. To illustrate this point, I'll ask you yet another question. What does a basketball have to do with an upset baby? Now, other than the fact that they both have two B's in the word, baby and basketball, there's not a lot of corollaries that you could think of to draw from these two things right off the top of your head. And I'll tell you, the basketball was a completely random selection. I opened up the folder for my artwork and just decided to grab the first thing that I saw, the top of the column for the second column, alphabetically listed basketball, I guess is why, but uh, there was a basketball sitting there looking at me, so I just double-clicked on that and brought it into the project and decided that was the thing that I was going to work with to really illustrate how you can use virtually anything as a way of creating these pattern interrupts. See, I'm doing this as a means of trying to get you to become aware of and a little bit sensitive and tuned into the idea of when these things are actually happening in your world so that you can recognize how often they actually occur. Now, what does a baby and an uh, upset baby have to do with a basketball? Well, I'll introduce uh, the answer to that. I want to show you this product. It's called Happy Tummy. And the Happy Tummy product is an amazing product that was developed uh, by a woman that I'm very close to who developed this as a result of having a colicky baby that she couldn't uh, get relief for. And again, mother of necessity being, uh, necessity being the mother of invention, she actually created this and as a consequence has brought relief to just thousands and thousands of babies with discomfort and their families and caregivers. Uh, the product is just remarkable. It can be found at uh, online and at major retailers like Babies R Us, Bye Bye Baby. It's been uh, featured in magazines. It's won uh, awards, been seen on TV. As I said, it was invented out of need. And what's amazing about this is it's a completely external remedy and it's completely natural and it provides virtually instant results. So people who use it absolutely love it. 
Um, the product is also recommended by pediatricians, just to give you an idea of the strength behind how powerful this simple little device is and the relief that it can bring has pediatricians recommending it to their patients. So back to a basketball and a baby. What does a basketball have to do with a baby? Well, what if you opened up your uh, promotional video or your segment uh, and you, all you had to work with was a basketball and you needed to do that? This is just a means, again, of illustrating exactly how you can go about doing this. So another thing to note before I share this with you is that any competing solution to Happy Tummy involves messy drops that are an oral administered remedy that actually upsets the baby before they can even begin to get relief if the drops do work at all. So, back to the basketball and the screaming baby. If you open with a shot of you holding a basketball and you had this uh, scripting for your uh, promotional video, you'd actually be introducing a lot of concepts all at once. So I'll run through it really quick. Hello and welcome. My name is Marion and this is an ordinary basketball, which is great if you want to play games. But when a baby is gassy, constipated, cramping, colicky, or just plain cranky and fussy, it's no game. And a basketball won't do anything to help you or your baby get relief. If you're looking for a magic potion that'll just make it all go away, trust me, you won't find it. But that doesn't mean there's not hope. If you're watching this, it's likely that you're a lot like I once was. So, I'm going to stay on this slide for just a minute and point out some of the things that are interesting about this and why it's uh, uh, worthy of learning from. So, we've got the hello and welcome. Everybody's expecting that. My name is Marion, and this is an ordinary basketball would not be something that somebody who's looking for a solution for their fussy baby would expect to encounter. Now, I don't know that the woman who owns this company would want to deliver this message again. It was a completely random thing so that I could show you how this works with virtually anything. So this is an ordinary basketball. And then I thought, okay, well, how can we tie the basketball in? Well, a basketball is about playing games. Dealing with a baby is very serious. Boom, there's the parallel. So this is an ordinary basketball, which is great when you want to play games. But when a baby, and now you're identifying with their problem, is gassy, constipated, cramping, colicky, or just plain cranky and fussy, it's no game. And a basketball won't do anything to help you or your baby get relief. So the suggestion there is that there is something that will get them relief. It just ha doesn't happen to be a basketball. Now the next paragraph says, if you're looking for a magic potion, what's a potion? Well, typically when we think of a potion, what comes to your mind? For most people that I've asked, it's actually something that would be in a dainty little bottle with a uh, ornamental top on it that you would drink or pour into a liquid and then drink. So what I'm saying, if you're looking for a magic potion that'll just make it all go away, trust me, you won't find it. I'm actually kind of taking a dig at oral remedies there by saying, hey, a potion isn't going to be the thing. So there's a subtle association with the word potion to an orally administered remedy. Uh, and so that's why I chose to frame that like that. And I'm telling them, trust me, you won't find it in a magic potion. But that doesn't mean there isn't hope. Now, what did we talk about earlier with feelings? They want the feeling that they think they're going to get when they know that they can provide their baby with a quick, effective remedy. And so what they're looking for, what they really have is hope. And they want to find that hope and manifest something that's going to create a remedy for them. And so then we go into the relatability. If you're watching this, it's likely that you're a lot like I once was. That makes them have the sense that you've been where they at, they're at, so you can relate to what it is that they're dealing with, and you likely have the solution. Now, did we come out and say, hey, if you've got a fussy, cranky baby, we know exactly how to handle it and we've got the perfect solution? Not at all. We interrupted their initial blindsight skepticism and their uh, feelings of uh, buyer's uh, uh, defenses being up, and we interrupted that 
we brought together something that uh, was an inanimate object and decided that uh, it, it's about playing games and we drew the parallel that uh, working with uh, an upset baby or dealing with an upset baby is not a game and that uh, having what I have here, be it a basketball or whatever it is, is not going to get you or your baby relief. Um, so this is really a, a powerful concept and I spend the amount of time on it that I do because I really want you to be clear on the various elements that make that up. Now. Once you have the ability to do that, um, you can really develop these kinds of things right off the top of your head, and they come pretty quick and they come pretty fast. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, you'll develop a skill for pretty naturally, pretty quickly, and pretty easily. It's just a matter of understanding the principles behind it. Now, the last thing on there, as I said, is if you're watching this, it's likely that you and I are a lot alike, or it's likely that you're a lot like I once was. What's that about? Relatability. Don't make them work to relate to you. Don't make it their job to relate to you. Make it easy for them. You know, if you're watching this, it's highly likely that you and I are a lot alike, or it's highly likely that you're like a lot of my clients, or it's highly likely that you're like a lot of the people that I've helped, etc. And you actually say it. You see, in doing this, you've created relatability. And Whoever's watching your video or reading your copy, if they've got an interest in what it is that you have to offer, then they're a lot like you are, like you once were, like a lot of your clients are or were, or like a lot of the people that you've helped in the past. So you can actually tell them that. And when you actually tell them that, it stills in them a sense of relatability. Remember, if you can define a problem better than the person who has the problem, that person automatically assumes you have the answer. And this is a measure that we put in place to be able to do exactly that, is if you're watching this, if you're reading this, it's highly likely that you and I are a lot alike. Now that's relatability. Okay, so that's it for this module. In the next module, we're going to take a close look at the things that we look at. If you haven't finished all the exercises in your workbook, I'm sure it goes without saying at this point, but go ahead and complete those and I will uh, be waiting for you in the next video and I'll see you there.